Curtis Joseph joins us in studio. Uh, Curtis is involved in the promotion with Gillette, and uh, he will be at the Mississauga Square One Walmart Supercenter. That's at 100 City Center Drive in Mississauga on June 14th from noon to 4 p.m. You can meet Curtis Joseph, and they get a chance to show off your moves in a uh, specially designed hockey simulator. All right, we'd be remiss if we didn't ask you about the Stanley Cup Finals. Of course, the New York Rangers staving off elimination last night. I still don't know how they did it. I watched the third period, and I, I just I kept waiting for I kept waiting for the inevitable Jeff Carter shot that was going to get by Henrik uh, that was going to get by Henrik Lundqvist. I mean, Curtis, that's an example of uh, of a game where a goalie literally does uh, does steal the game for his team. But you know, somebody was mentioning to me that that there hasn't been a sweep in the playoffs since '98. In in the finals, why do you think that is? Because it really does seem when you get to the finals, maybe it's guys are tired, they played a lot of hockey, teams are balanced, but it's awfully hard to win that fourth game in a row, isn't it? Yeah, it's always hard to put a team out. And uh, you know, when I played, that was a saying uh, on a few teams that I played. To actually close a team out is the hardest thing to do. Like mm-hmm. their backs against the wall, and um, you know you're. You are up three. It's human nature to to take a a breath each time, and you're on the cusp of winning, and that team takes a breath. It didn't look like the Kings took a, a you know let down. Mm-hmm. They uh they had the killer instinct, which which is a great quality. But the X factor is uh, King Henrik Lundqvist. He is that good, and I think I made a prediction earlier when New York had a game seven, and I'm like New York's going to win it because of Lundqvist. Mm-hmm. You know, at game sevens are a whole different ball game there. They're the game within a game. They're they're more pressure, more pressure, and uh, you win, you're in, you, you lose, you're out. So, Lundqvist is able to handle that pressure along with being a great goaltender. So it's going to be hard to put them out because of him, I mm-hmm. believe. It's funny if you talk to to guys, and I, I think it, it might have been Marty Brodeur quoted talking about playing in game sevens. I, I can't remember which goalie it was now, but it was it was during the playoffs last year they were talking about playing in game sevens. And he was making the point that game sevens for a goalie, one of two things happen. The game is so incredibly, goes by so incredibly fast that when it's done you go, oh, or it's so slow. Yeah. And, and and every little drop of pressure just builds and builds. How, how, how did you find those elimination games? Did they go by fast for you? Or were they really slow and just kind of pressure upon pressure? Well, they are... Uh, I tune into Game 7s now because I realize that everything's on the line. And it's... Um, and once you're finished and you win, it's... Um, the greatest risk reward, you know, mm-hmm. and it, it's a great feeling. But uh, And to shake the other team's hand... You know, is a great feeling, but um, there is a lot of pressure. Usually, if you're a, a star goalie like a Marty Berdur, you know that if you have a good, a great game, you're probably going to win. Mm-hmm. If you have a bad game or so, so you're going to lose. So, really, the goaltending position is a is a pivotal position that you hold a lot of cards. And um, but the reason why those guys are so great is because they know they have an advantage in a game seven. Mm-hmm. And that's the way you got to look at it. You got to go, um, you know, I'm Marty Berdur. I have an advantage on that guy. If there's this, this much pressure on me, there's that much pressure on him, and I can withstand it. You actually talk yourself into playing well in game sevens. That's what I tried to do. Did, uh, and, and we, I know we had you in last year, and we were talking about how you also, um, and I think we were talking about using it in the context of Roberto Luongo, you were talking about how when you played, you know, people would say, man, Curtis is such a great guy, but sometimes he'd be an awfully boring interview after the game. You're yes. going, That's because I didn't want people, you don't want to let people know that you've got some self-doubt. Everybody has self-doubt, but if you're a goal, if you're a goaltender, if I'm a defenseman, the last thing I want is my guy sitting over in the corner going, man, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's going on here. I'd rather look at the guy and have him go, nah, we lost. We'll be okay. Yep. No self-doubt. That's exactly it. Never show weakness. You never want to show the other team an ounce of weakness in any interview, anything. And everything's so scrutinized now and watched uh, videotapes. So you really are stoic and um, you don't give them anything. You don't Mm -hmm. give them anything to build on and uh, you want to make them feel like you're invincible. Mm -hmm. Did you, when when you watch the playoffs now and and there are guys, they have, they have, Instead of just interviewing players in front of their locker, a lot of the times now they'll have 
uh, an interview on a stage where it's a set format. Mm. You know, the guys, there's mm. TV cameras, guys get questions. Did you, would you have preferred that compared to having 50, 50 people huddled around your locker? Because I've, I've often wondered, I mean, from a media point of view, I know guys prefer getting in the dressing room and sort of getting guys at the unguarded moment and asking them questions. But I've talked to a lot of athletes go, you know, I'm kind of comfortable when I'm sitting up on stage. I get a chance to, I've got water in front of me. I can think twice before I answer a question. Would you have, do you think you would have been more, would that have been better, do you think? Um, I've done both ways. Yeah. And um, I actually am a little old school. I like getting the interview of the player with the sweat on his face and, and the helmet off. And right after the game, you're going to get a little more candid interview and a little more... The other, it seems like it's far removed after the game. Mm-hmm. I think the fans uh, would like to see in locker room. You know, I've been where the scrum is in front of you, especially in the playoffs in Toronto, where the the reporters are actually fighting for yeah. position. They're elbowing each other, and fist fight broke out. Mm-hmm. So it's actually, you know, you see the intensity, and everybody wants to get a quote. And it's, I like the locker room atmosphere better. I want to shift back to your role uh, as a father. Um, do, do your kids watch? The, do you guys, would, will you watch hockey together as a family? Will you sit down as a group and watch hockey? Or like so many families now, do you find that everybody's going their own way? And Well, we all have busy lives, but uh, we do watch hockey together. And if I miss something or I miss a game, I just have to pick up my phone and text one of my older boys. or mm-hmm. And they'll tell me exactly what's going on, whether it's Stanley Cup playoffs or the Memorial Cup. You know, they're at that age where they mm-hmm. got guys playing. I, I just have to ask them quickly, and they've they've got an answer for me. So we are a sports family, no question, a hockey family, and uh, um, you know we play fantasy baseball against each mm-hmm. other. Um, you know, the last five years I played in the NHL, we always had a fantasy uh, baseball team with the team. Mm-hmm. So I let my older boy, you know, run my run league, but he had to he had to pass it by me if he was going to make a trade. So you know, me and Jerome McGinley would be making trades on the way to the rink in the in the playoffs, but. Um, my older boy would text me and go, Dad, I'm going to make a trade this guy for this guy. And I go, yeah, that's a good move. Or, you know, so sports has been a huge part of our um, our life and uh, it's kept us together and talking about different things. And uh, I really, really enjoy it. No, it used to be that uh, guys who played hockey, a lot of them would play baseball as well in the, in the summer or, the, or even growing up as kids. Um what sort of kept you interested in baseball? I mean, you're involved in fantasy sports, obviously, so that's part of it. But I've, I mean, I've seen you at a lot of Jays games. I've seen you in spring training. Yes. Been down at games at spring training as well. What is it that's kept you interested in baseball as well as, uh, as, well as hockey? Well, I think it's a great sport. It's a, it's a thinking. You've got to think. It's a, um, there's a lot of strategy involved. Um, I loved playing it personally. Mm-hmm. I loved hitting the ball. I loved running and uh, fielding and um, you know my kids play it also and I love watching my older boy was a pitcher you know and I I love watching him pitch that was one of my favorite mm-hmm. things to do and um, it's just a it's a great you know you've been in hockey so long that you know every piece of it you've lived everything it's nice to step back and take a break and, and look at another sport mm-hmm. and appreciate it for what it is and what their attributes are and I think I'm at that point in my life. You watch, you'll watch baseball differently than hockey because you haven't, you didn't play baseball at a major league level. No question. It's more. Do you find yourself it's more enjoyable or it's different or? Yeah, it might be. Um, you know, in hockey, I watch and I watch players. I watch different things on the ice. I watch. You know, I don't watch the game as an entire right. game. I watch little things and battles and different things but baseball i think i watch as a whole and i just enjoy the sport it's relaxing you know Mm -hmm. you can just kick back and you know just just watch it uh curtis joseph again will be at uh he'll be on site at mississauga square one walmart super center that's at 100 city center drive in mississauga on june 14th from noon to 4 p.m drop by and meet cujo and uh Get to test your skills in a uh, specially designed hockey simulator. And again, uh, I'll give you for, some tips. Yeah, Cujo will give you some tips. And to learn more about Gillette, the Fusion Pro Glide with Flexball technology, you can visit Gillette.com, Facebook.com backslash Gillette, and uh, Curtis, and, and the, uh, the survey as well, which, is, which I, find, uh, I find fascinating. Curtis, thanks so much for doing this. It's always great to talk to you. Thanks for having Good me on, Jeff.